Hey guys, uh, hope you're having a good day. Uh, coming at you from uh, day 247 of quarantine. Um, losing our minds just a little bit, but that's okay. Um, getting ready to move, so packing up a lot of boxes here. Um, thank you for joining us, and I uh, just want to remind you to submit your phrase for our game, catch that phrase on our Instagram account. Make sure you're watching it this week, and I'll put it put a plug into the video with the, the phrases that you submit and I'll, I'll tag you in it and give you a shout out. It'll be lots of fun I'm trying to figure out what the phrases were and, and, and that kind of stuff. And at the end, we'll reveal them and, and who submitted them. So, oh, Jack, what, what are you doing? Just trying to help out, you know? No, just, just leave it alone. But, I know, Jack, just, just do as I say. Who are you, George? Yes. Who are you to tell me what to do? Jack, I'm so tired of you thinking Zach? that. Jack, don't make me separate you two. Okay, okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you got in trouble. <laughs> Sucker. When we want to know how to do something, most of us go and Google it or YouTube it. Things like how to get in shape, how to unsend a text, or maybe how to do the Christian Renegade. But there are some things that don't have a simple solution or a how-to video. Things like what to do when you have a problem with family, or when it seems like you have no control in a situation, or what to do when someone has done something to you. Some things just aren't easy to find online. So what do you do when you don't know what to do? Let's be honest, how many of you have ever been guilty of overusing emojis in the past? It's either you or a friend, right, that sends way too many emojis or GIFs, 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 I can never remember. They send way too many to convey what they're actually thinking when just one really would have done the trick. I've gotta admit, I've been there myself, but I actually kinda like emojis. I'm not always the best at conveying my emotion through text. Who is, right? but they help me to send the message that I want to send and say what hopefully I'm trying to say. The three most emojis that I probably use more than anything else are the laughing to your face to convey that much giggling was had, the unamused eye roll when I'm annoyed with something, or the hand slap to the face when I'm annoyed with myself. Those are the three I probably use more than anything else. And that's the beauty of emojis because they convey what you want to say without having to use a whole lot of words. Take a second right now and put your three most used emojis in the comments. I'm curious what yours are. So we all have those emojis that maybe we're guilty of overusing, maybe we're not, but there are also emojis that we have and there are some that I have that I don't use very often, but when I do, they say a lot. And these emojis are the ones that are gonna set the stage for what we're gonna be talking about today. We have this one, or this one, or even this one. They're the ones that we use when we don't know what to use. When we have no words for a situation, and you know the kind of situations I'm talking about, the ones where you're just like, I have nothing left to say, except maybe, ah, oh, Nutter Butters. We're shocked. We don't know how to deal with the situation. It's whenever someone does something or something happens and you haven't even had the time to process it yet. You, you don't know how to feel about it even. Maybe it's something that just came out of nowhere and you weren't expecting it. Those kind of situations, that, is what we're gonna be talking about today. Have you experienced anything like that before? I'm sure you have. If you haven't, then you probably will at some point. Maybe when you were texting a friend and they told you how they really felt about you, but it was a text that was supposed to go to somebody else and they were talking about you. And because they had just been talking to you, they accidentally sent it to you instead of to the other friend that they were talking to about you. We've probably all been in something similar. But it leaves you like, whoa, okay, now I know what you really think, friend. Or maybe it was when you got a rejection letter from the college that you were really banking on getting into and you thought you had it in the bag, but apparently not. Maybe it's when your parents sat down and said, hey, uh, so dad's gotten a new job. And so that's fun and exciting, but it means that we're gonna have to pack up and we're gonna have to move. And maybe that came out of left field because you didn't even know that your dad was looking for a new job. Or maybe it was when you got dumped. 
You thought everything was great, everything was roses and rainbows, and you had no idea, you didn't see it coming. In fact, you had already bought your three month anniversary gift. And it just kind of left you feeling like, what just happened? Maybe you had a little bit of whiplash and you're trying to make sense of the whole situation. If you've never been in something like that before, I promise you will, as is life at times. And I could go on and on of, of things that have probably happened. You can probably think of them yourself. But just as equally shocking as those events themselves, sometimes we even shock ourselves with our own response to those things, right? Sometimes we're surprised by how well we handle it. Like we didn't see it coming, but when it happened, we, we jumped into crisis mode and we were able to handle it in a way that was actually really well handled. And we're like, wow, I'm pretty impressed with myself. I didn't know I had that in me. Maybe sometimes we surprise ourselves with how much it tears us apart. Maybe we thought it wasn't that big of a deal, but then when we actually started processing the emotions, we realized we're really torn up about it and we really don't know how to handle the situation. Maybe it cut a little deeper than we realized. Sometimes those situations bring us closer to God and make us feel closer to God. And sometimes, let's just be honest, they make us feel like God is farther than ever. Because we're all wired a little bit differently, we all experience hurt a little bit differently. But that doesn't change the fact that hurt still hurts. Even if we experience it on different levels, it still hurts. And they can leave you wondering what to do when you don't know what to do. We all encounter the no words emoji moments. And just as we talked about last week, Joseph had some of those too. We started talking about his story last week with some of the family drama, and we're gonna continue his story today. And today especially is one of those moments where it just, I have no words. And, and I, can, I can certainly imagine that when he was in the situation at the time, he had no words to convey how he actually felt. He couldn't probably even believe that what happened to him actually happened to him. If he was texting you about his story in real time as it was happening, this is probably the only emoji he would have sent because there were no words to describe what happened to him. And we're gonna get into that today. If you'll remember our story from last week, Joseph was his father Jacob's favorite son and all of his brothers knew it and all of his brothers despised him because of it. Not only were they not okay with him being their dad's favorite, but they were also not okay with him sharing his dreams and visions of how he was gonna someday be better than him and they were all gonna bow down and worship him. So we're gonna pick up exactly where we left off last week and we're gonna see how did they respond to all of this. But they saw him in a distance, and before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. Wow, that escalated quickly. They were like, we gotta get rid of this guy like ASAP as possible. It continues on. Here comes that dreamer, they said to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. And despite the anger that he had at Joseph at the time, one of his brothers actually had a little bit of a moral compass. He had a little bit of a conscience and he speaks up in the next verse. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. Thank goodness for Reuben, right? He actually convinced his brothers to throw Joseph into a hole in the ground rather than going all homicidal on him. Fortunately, his brothers listened to him and when Joseph arrived, they ripped off that special coat of his and threw him into the well. When your brothers tear up your jacket and throw you in a well. But actually, they're still not done with him. Remember, Reuben was gonna come back later and, and rescue him and bring him back to his father. Well, as luck would have it, a caravan starts approaching and Judah, one of the other brothers, has this brilliant idea, hey, how about let's just be rid of him once and for all and we don't have to carry his blood on our conscience. Let's just sell him to these slave traders and we can get some money out of it and we can get rid of our brother at the same time. So that's exactly what they did. They took Joseph's coat and they killed an animal and put some blood on it to make it look like he had been devoured. And here's what it says in the next verse happened. They took the ornate robe back to their father and said, we found this, examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. And that last line is so telling. They don't say, is this Joseph's robe? They don't say, is this our brother's robe? They said, is this your son's robe? They don't wanna even claim him as part of the family. It's kinda of like when Zeke acts up and Chelsea looks at me and she says, that's your son, deal with him. It's like, hey, it took both of us. And Joseph be like, good news, out of the well. Bad news, they actually sold me, like into actual slavery. I'm being a little bit lighthearted here, but there was nothing lighthearted about this situation, especially from Joseph's perspective. His brothers literally sold him off to slavery and said, 
we're better off without you. I mean, your family may have some tension at times, but it can't be worse than that, come on. At least your family doesn't like pawn you off and forget about you. And in the midst of that crazy situation where Joseph is probably questioning everything and, and not only his family's love for him or if they're gonna find him, but he, it's not like he can unsell himself into slavery. He can't buy his way out. He, he now belongs to somebody else. And as hopeless and dire as that situation seemed, it actually gets worse. And we'll talk about that in the next few weeks. But Joseph is asking probably the same thing that you have asked when you've been in that kind of situation. What do I do? What do I do when I don't know what to do? Joseph was definitely in one of those moments at this point in time. But you know what? The story goes on and continues to tell us one very important truth that made all the difference in Joseph's life and can make all the difference in your situation as well. It says, the Lord was with Joseph. Joseph didn't have a whole lot going for him at that point, and even afterward, and Joseph would have had every opportunity to turn to despair and, and give up. To say, what point is there in me continuing on or even having faith at all? But instead, he decided to rely on this one truth, that God was with him. Even when he had no evidence to believe in that. And here's the reality, the truth didn't change Joseph's circumstance, but it was better than being alone. This truth didn't mean that Joseph could see where the story was going. Remember, he's living in it for the first time. We're getting the benefit of reading about this years after it's happened. We know the end of the story. But at the time, Joseph didn't know where it was going. He didn't see what God was doing or how it was all going to turn out. But it was better than knowing that he was all dependent on himself for the outcome. He could depend on God. This truth also didn't mean that Joseph could easily deal with the things that were happening to him. It didn't explain it away or, or, or give it some kind of purpose yet, but it did mean that he didn't have to figure it all out on his own. And the same is true for you. When there's nothing you can do, God is with you. When life hands you some shocking news, when, when there's unforeseen circumstances, when you don't know what God is doing in the midst of your story, He is still with you and there's still hope. All we have to do is believe in that one truth and depend on Him. Maybe we'll get to see what God is actually doing through our circumstance later. Maybe we don't find out the side of heaven, but we find out when we're in eternity with Him, the good that was able to happen because of our situation. We don't always know, but we do know that God is in control and He works all things out for the good of those who love Him. Knowing that God is with us may not change our circumstance, but it will change us. And it will give us the hope to continue on and to have faith in Him despite whatever is happening around us. It's easy to give in to despair and to give in to anger and, and hurt and confusion and, and to just give up because of what's going on. But if there's anything that Joseph's story tells us in this moment, it's that we can have faith and we can carry on despite what's going on. So what does that look like for us practically? There's no magic formula of how to get through these kinds of things flawlessly. I wish there was. I wish there was a way to get through it with no pain, with, with no more hurt. But the reality is that's just not the case. So what we can do is first off, we can be real. It's okay to actually feel your feelings. If you're feeling hurt and you're feeling angry, if you're feeling betrayed, if you're feeling confused, then be real about it. You can give that to God, tell him about it. God can handle our hurts. He can handle our doubts. He can handle our confusion and our anger, but be real with him. Don't pretend like everything's okay. Don't just say, oh, well, God's got it. And, and then like just secretly still be mad about it, even though you don't know what's going on. Be real about those things. Feel what you're feeling, but be honest with them. Don't try to bury those feelings. Feelings. You'll never be able to work through them and come out on the other side if you don't be real about them. And secondly, remind yourself and others that God is with you. You are not alone. You're not going through this alone. Even right now in this crazy situation we're in right now, we aren't going through it by ourselves. We're all going through it together. Quarantine sucks sometimes. Some of us are going a little bit out of our minds, but at least we're all going out of our minds together, right? <laughs> <laughs> but for real, always try to find the silver lining. And even if there's no silver lining, depend on God. When you don't know what to do, God is with you and you are not alone. Well, winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's all we got for this week. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and joining us again. Make sure you come back next time as we continue in the life of Joseph and we continue to discover more answers of what to do when you don't know what to do. I love you guys. We'll see you next week.
Well, did you guys catch the phrases this week? The first one we had came from Carly Hoagland. I have nothing left to say, except maybe, ah, oh, Nutter Butters. The next one we had came from Sydney Clements. They were like, we gotta get rid of this guy like ASAP as possible. Courtesy of Michael G. Scott, Dunder Mifflin Paper Company. We also had Winner Winner Chicken Dinner by April Mills. Well, Winner Winner Chicken Dinner, that's all we got for this week. Thank you all again for submitting those and be on the watch on our Instagram account to make sure that you don't miss submitting your fun phrases. I enjoy putting those in the message. Until next time, we'll see you. Have a good week. He actually convinced his brothers to show. He actually, he actually convinced his brothers to show. He actually convinced his brothers to throw Joseph into a. He actually convinced his brothers to. I'm gonna sneeze. Hey guys, uh, good morning. It's uh, day 247, um, but uh, we're we're glad that you guys have joined us. No, just what are you doing? Don't don't worry about it. Well, I just want to help. You know, no, don't don't argue with me. Just please, just do I'm as arguing. I say. I'm not, well, who put you in charge? Jack. Don't don't tell me what to Come do. Come on, man. I'm my own boss, okay? Zach. Jack. Do I need to separate you guys? No. No. Get along. <laughs> Oh, that was the geese take. Oh, Dang it. Oh, man. Dang it. <laughs> we'll, we'll try that again. The geese take. <laughs>